And welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Writer's Parachute. We are guiding writer and author dreams to a perfect landing. And today we have with us another amazing guest. We have Stanetta Anthony. She is an author of children's book and a former school teacher. So we want to welcome her. She's going to talk today about her book behind me, A Home for Sally, and her other book, which is The Love Story. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But as always, we do start off with just a little bit of housekeeping. So I want to remind you guys to go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Writer Parachute with no S. And of course, we have been doing February with New You in 2022, and we've been talking about self-care. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about self-care that is personal. So we're going to talk about, you know, you taking care of yourself. You have to take care of your body. You have to get enough sleep. You have to need to eat well. You need to get exercise and you need to take those moments to just relax. If that's going to watch comedy, if that's going to go read a book for fun or enjoyment, then go do that. Because I know as a creative, if I do not keep my body in tip top shape, it distracts me from the creative pursuits that I want to enjoy. So make sure that you are taking care of yourself and make it a priority in this year, 2022, the year of the tiger. We are going to roar all the way through the year. And I hope that you are taking care of you and you have more in creative endeavors and that you're able to pursue those more stringently if you're taking care of yourself. I would love to hear what it is that you're doing or what you're changing around self-care for you in 2022. If you could leave us a note in the comment, we would love to hear what you have to say and what you think of all the segments here on the Writer's Parachute. We love to hear from our uh, fans and listeners, so be sure to let us know. So I uh, also want to remind you that at the end of the show, I will be pulling the report on another tip. We'll do marketing promotion or publishing, or it may be about writing. We'll wind out at the end of the show. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But right now, though, I want to welcome our guest, Stanetta Anthony, to the Writer's Parachute. So Stanetta was born and raised in the Midwest. She is a preschool educator for more than 20 years before becoming an author. Her creative talent was enhanced and developed while educating her young students. Being in a classroom atmosphere was the preparation needed for writing books that are educational, insightful, motivational, and thought-provoking. She resides in Illinois with her high school sweetheart, husband, her children, and grandchildren. Stanetta began her career as an educator more than 20 years ago. She has earned her bachelor's degree at Grand Canyon University. After reading hundreds of other author stories to her young students, she began her own writing career at, uh, in children's books with a passion to create books that engage, enhance, elevate, and invoke love for reading and all children. Welcome to the Writer's Parachute, Stanetta. How are you today? I am so well, Donna. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. Just want people to know the wonderfulness of Donna and that we became Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited to be on the writer's uh, parachute with you. We go way back on Facebook. And so it's exciting to see you face to face. Well, thank you. Yes, we, uh, we've gone all the way back to, I don't know, it feels like the Stone Age. It was back before my first book came out. So it, it feels like a really <laughs> yes. long time ago. Yes, I don't think yes. we were quite hammering them out on stone tablets, but it was close. <laughs> so, it was. Uh, you have been very active at, in, as a member of the children's um, book genre and also as an adoption animal adoption advocate these two ideas kind of collide and come together in your book a home for sally and i want to know why was it so important to bring those together uh well um as you described i was a former educator so i seen the importance of reading hundreds and possibly thousands of books about how a character like in the home for Sally has a disability 
and um, bringing that into where I, instead of using a child, using an animal. And that I taught children who were special needs. And what I found is they were not often in books, you know, uh, uh, a blind child or someone with a missing limb, such as Sally, she has a missing paw, of course, but they weren't, they weren't there. They weren't a, they weren't represented. They just, in, in the they book. were not forefront in, in reading. And so it was important. And even with Sally's story, hers is, when I would watch television and the adoption shows and everything on Saturday morning television, I didn't see a lot of people talking about adopting a special needs puppy or a special needs dog. And so those two factors came together and they came together in a book. Wow. You know, and, and I love that idea. You know, I myself am an animal lover. I have, I have cats instead of dogs, not because I prefer one over the other, but my cats refuse to let a dog move in. Uh, they just <laughs> looking over the household. I just serve them from now on. So uh, I do love this idea. And, you know, and I agree with you. It's like, there are many, um, areas that kids are underrepresented in these books and and I've talked about this often that you know when you go into schools and talk to these students that you know a lot of, a lot of times why they find that they're reticent to read books is because they don't see themselves in the books so I am glad that that you are bringing this this idea forward about uh disabled or physically challenged so I love your book, A Home for Sally, and you do talk about a physically challenged dog and that it was an important message for children. Why do you think that uh, this particular story resonates with them? Um, I think so. I think it resonates with them because, uh, again, they are underrepresented. And one of the things that I often discover when I'm reading to children, when I'm going to schools or libraries or something, the first thing they always ask me is, why does that dog look so funny? And so in their eyes, this particular puppy, which is Sally, should, she doesn't seem to be normal, although she is normal. And so with children, sometimes they look at a uh, an adult or they may look at another child and it may be a stare and they're wondering in their little minds why don't they look like me I I have all of my arms I have all of my fingers you know your 10 we often hear the child is born normal with their 10 fingers or 10 toes or you know whatever but there are children who are born without certain mm -hmm. limbs and so to other children, they look not, I, I want to use the right word. They don't look like them. I'm going to say they, they just don't look like them. And right. so they often wonder, why don't they look like me? Or why don't I look like them? And so I often get a lot of questions about that. A lot, a lot of questions. Right. So, and I understand that um, I have, uh, you know, implanted a device, which, you know, my grandchildren when they were younger would describe me as being part robot. And, and this was always a point of contention with the, in, uh, the teachers because they thought she was making this up. And I'm like, no, no, it's just her way of explaining it. And I think oftentimes we avoid those conversations with children about, uh, why things are the way they are. And I think this also gives into this staring and it's not oftentimes I find with children not staring because they're put off by it. They're more staring because they're curious. And I think, uh, you know, as adults, as educators that we need to maybe open up the conversation, which is what I love about your book, because it does open that conversation to talk about children who may have physical challenges or, you know, or to talk about how to be around people with physical challenges, because honestly, you know, we just want to be like everyone else. So, 
you know, and, and so we just want to be treated like everyone else. We don't want to be an exception. So, um, yeah, so the more we can teach kids about it, I think is an amazing, you know, way of opening that conversation and getting it more uh, normalized. I'm sure that's not the correct word, but I think that probably covers what it is we're trying to do. We're trying to make it an even playing field for everyone. So where did you find the inspiration for this main character, Sally? Because she is adorable. Okay, so I found her through me. Ah. Because I have a, uh, some of us are born with um, a challenging something. Mm -hmm. And some of us, it happens, you know, uh, maybe there's an accident. So at the young age of three, uh, I'm going to show my hand right here. Yeah, I have a middle finger. So at the young age of three, uh, my finger was slammed in a door. And I lost the nerve mm -hmm. in that particular finger. Well, because it's my middle finger, when I was in the classroom most of the time, if I was doing something because I don't have control of it, it would just point upward. Oh my. So, <laughs> so you can imagine the students, uh, because I was teaching preschool to third grade, so when I would do something, they would say, oh, Mrs. Anthony. And so they thought it was the funniest thing. And so we had to have open conversations of why my finger <laughs> was not what it was saying, that they thought it was saying. They would often think it was, I was saying a bad word. Right. And so I had to explain to them, this is, you know, this happened to me when I was a child. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing else I can do. And so I do that with children, but sometimes I have to do that with adults as well, because they have a funny look on their face as if I'm trying to say something and I'm not trying to say anything. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, my finger is here. <laughs> It's my finger and it's just the way it is. And so with the missing limb with Sally, mm -hmm. I thought about my finger and how it's just funny how life is and how we view things and how we look at things. And it actually made me look at myself because for a long time, I tried to cover that up, you know? And uh, so now I'm okay with it. even being an adult. I tried to readjust my hand as much as I could. And then I just came to the point of it is what it is. And this is how I am. And so I thank God for my finger. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I do appreciate that, you know, as somebody that, that struggles with, you know, physical challenges myself, it's like, it's really difficult to disguise that. Most people will see me here on the, on the show sitting down and I look perfectly normal. They don't see me struggling to walk across a room. And, um, you know, and it is just what it is. And I love both sides of that. I actually love the fact that I can appear to be normal and be treated as equal. But at the same time, you know, if somebody sees me, you know, I would rather they ask the question than, than to wonder. And I love the fact that we're bringing up these conversations about, you know, people with physical challenges because they are becoming more and more prevalent. I always find that classrooms are kind of a microcosm of society and how we look at things, um, you know, because again, you know, children, are, you know, they're mimickers, you know, they, they mimic what they hear and see and, uh, but they also have very little filter, so they don't know <laughs> that, that shouldn't come out. So uh, I always loved being in the classroom with kids to find out how they were going to react to certain things, because I find that it, it's usually pretty honest with what normal society would respond. So uh, I'm glad that that brought you some inspiration for this book, which is an amazing book. And I do encourage anybody that wants to adopt an, an animal, whether it be a cat or a dog or a kangaroo, although we don't have kangaroos here in the United States, um, you know, to go pick up a copy of A Home for Sally and read through it and think about, you know, all of the animals out there who are struggling that could use your help, you know, uh, and also 
to think about how we look at other kids, not just animals who are struggling and maybe bring up that conversation with your kids about how do we deal with somebody who has, you know, who has challenges? Because I think as we move forward, we all know everybody has challenges. Some are easily recognizable, some are quite hidden, but we are all struggling along that road to life. So I'm going to shift gears just a little bit because a little birdie told me that you have another book series coming out soon. What can you tell us about that? And can we get a sneak peek at it? Yes, I'm so excited. I don't have the cover yet. Um, the series is Ella and Ella is an elephant. And um, I'm excited about Ella because um, I finished the first book of Ella. So hopefully it'll be released by um, October. Okay. But, we're working on it. Okay. And so the first book in that series is actually called Ella Learns to Dance. And by her being an elephant, it's, she, lo she loves to dance ballet. Oh. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited of uh, how her adventure and learning how to learn ballet mm -hmm. because she's an elephant. Mm -hmm evolve so that's the first in her and I'm, I'm working on the second and third as we speak as we speak all right well we're so excited about that and of course you can always go check out her website which is tanettaanthony.com and that is s-t-e-n-e-t-t-a-a-n-t-h-o-n-y.com tanettaanthony.com uh, we will have links in the show notes for you if you don't get that written down. So do go check that out. We'll also have a link to her two books that are out now, A Home for Sally and The Love Story uh, that are available on Amazon. Oh, so okay. yeah, I'll let her hold those up for just a minute. Uh, so we will have links to those in the show notes. And as soon as we find out when we can get a pre-order link for this new series for Ella and Ella Learns to Dance, we will try and get those out to you. But do go follow Stanetta on her uh, social media. We'll have links to those as well and try and pick up her books. I am very excited about this. So we're going to talk about a few other things. So as every author and writer knows we experience challenges when we're trying to bring our stories books and series out to the public what surprising lesson did you have to overcome with your journey okay so i actually have two stories so the first one was with the love story mm -hmm. and so with the love story the love story was out on the market it was published and everything and I was excited and we were moving forward. So I thought, and in the midst of that, <clears throat> the publishing house closed. Oh my. So I had the love story that was there and A Home for Sally was in production. So at that time I had to decide what did I want to do? Um, as an author. So I taken a few months and thought about it. And so I republished the love story. Mm -hmm. uh, I own the, as every author, I advocate making sure you own the rights to your books, mm -hmm. your illustrations. And so I had to relaunch mm -hmm. the love story mm -hmm. as a self-published author. Right which was interesting. Yes. <laughs> it was interesting because I, I, I had a publisher that was helping me along the way. And then with the home for Sally, I had to start the process all over again, where I had to find another publishing house, which takes me about maybe a year and a half to find that mm -hmm. and go through that process all over again. Right. But in that, I had to learn, do not give up. Right. As an author, <laughs> it, it can be challenging at times. You can get frustrated at times. You may have to send those 
query letters out and uh, hear whatever you hear from your own self saying, maybe I should give up, but you have to decide to press on and continue with your process, no matter how long it takes you. And I always believe, tell authors, this is your baby. And you take as long as you need with your baby and don't let anyone rush you and your baby and your process. Right, and that is amazing advice. And for those of you who don't uh, know what she's talking about, oftentimes when you're we're dealing with these small presses and they shut down, your books are removed from the marketplace uh, because the publishing company that published them are no longer supported. So, uh, you know, in some cases, if you did not protect your publishing rights uh, to have that availability, oftentimes you'll have to go back to the owners or whoever uh, has the company that defaulted and get those publishing rights back. So it is kind of a process. Uh, oftentimes, if you change from one publisher to a next, it's especially the children's books and the illustrations and the covers and stuff like that, that often gets changed. Um, some of the story may get changed because of their their needs and um, their their guidelines and stuff like that. So it is a pretty big process where you're almost starting all the way over from the beginning. So I do applaud you for making that journey not once but twice. So <laughs> that that is amazing and and that. That is something that, you know, I, I do talk to authors about that when they have to go through that. And it is very, um, it's disconcerting when it happens, but, you know, it's, it's publishing, <laughs> you know, it's like any, anything could happen tomorrow as, as we well know. <laughs> I mean, yes. we're, we're two years into the, you know, the, the pandemic, it is starting to, uh, ease up a bit, but, you know, it, it really has changed the way that, that we've looked at so many things. So I think that's just kind of life in and of itself. So uh, what three tips would you offer to new authors or writers wanting to get into the children's book or in just to any um, genre of writing? It's like, I find this a fascinating question to ask my guests. Okay, so first, if you don't like children, I wouldn't recommend writing children's books because they are your first audience. And I surround myself with children and I listen to them first, uh, even before I listen to an adult. And some children have told me, I don't like anything about your books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're like, okay. So I changed them. Mm -hmm because they're my audience. So that's the first thing uh, you need, like I said, as a children's author, you need to surround yourself with children and hear what they're saying because they are your audience. They may not be your purchaser, but they are your audience. So you need to listen to them. A second tip I would uh, say is going back is make sure you own the rights to your publications. It is so essential that um, we are not just focused in on the writing part, but the business part as well, that we're making sure we're taking care of everything. Uh, if you're an author and you're just starting out, just as you have a plan for your home or a budget or whatever, establish a plan for your book. Well, how are you gonna promote it? How much is it gonna cost you? Am I going to have to collaborate with someone else and on and on and on, just as you would do that. And then the third thing I would say is have fun. Have fun with your writing. You know, when you're reading, if you have to laugh out loud, maybe it's not a comedy. <laughs> but, you know, you have to laugh out loud about yourself and say, OK, I didn't I didn't do it today. Right. And, you know, it's okay. It's okay. So right. those are the three tips. Those are, those are amazing tips. And, and I can tell you're a very exper experienced author and writer because this is some of the things that people don't think about. It's like, if you're not passionate about children and about speaking to children, because again, they are your audience and you need to speak to them in a, in a, in a manner that they're going to understand and react and uh, resonate with 
you know, then, then that's probably not the genre for you. Uh, you know, if you're not passionate about what you're writing, then you're going to have a difficult time. And then when you talk about the publishing rights, I mean, there is so much to the writing business. It's like, if you don't know the writing business, there are so many opportunities out there for you to learn that business. One of the ones that uh, I I appreciate, I, I get no, um, no kickback from them. I'm just doing this because I think they're a, a good company is I work with the Authors Guild. I love the Authors Guild and the fact that they are fighting for authors um, you know, to make sure that laws are, are kept in place to protect us, but also, you know, the services that they offer about teaching and education and about, you know, what your rights are and stuff like that. So I do encourage, uh, you know, authors to consider, you know, belonging to one of these uh, national associations for writers. There's the, the Children's Book Writers, um, uh, yeah, the Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the society of, there we go. I was like, wait, I'm missing a letter here. So it's the scbwi.org. And they, um, they're very helpful, especially if you're working in the children's book industry, but, you know, do reach out to some of these associations because they are very helpful in, in, in getting that. And like you said, at the end of the day, you know, all the passion in the world, all the education in the world is not going to get you through that book. It is about you enjoying the process what you're doing and you know recognizing that you know every day isn't you know a grand slam hit it out of the park some days it's just making it to first base <laughs> so, <laughs> you know that's kind of what I have yes. to say it's like you know it's like I might strike at but all I'm trying to do is get on base <laughs> It's just kind of, you have to, you have to give yourself room to just be what you are. So uh, do you have any upcoming events or promotions or anything that you'd like to share with us? Uh, you know what? I am preparing for my summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I am doing some virtual readings oh. for some schools. So I have those lined up for the summer. So I'm excited about that. Okay. And uh, just finishing my project with Ella. Okay. So we're we're working through that in the second and third part of Ella. So we're working through that. So that's where I am right now. Oh, awesome! So, uh, so where could they find out where these uh, virtual readings are going to be? Are they going to be available to the public, or is it closed to just the schools? It's closed currently. It's closed to the schools. Oh, okay. So but if uh, at some point they open them up, you know. I can, I can ask if they'll open them up, but you know. All right. Well, so what if they, uh, if they belong to a different school, how would they get in touch with you if they want to have a reading this summer from you? Okay. So you can uh, just visit my website, uh, which is danettaanthony.weebly.com. You can visit me. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> you can visit me there. Oh, I, uh, I believe Donna's going to have my email information. So you can email me and request a uh, virtual reading and we can uh, set that up. And I'll be excited to come in and read to you and your children. Okay. Well, see, that was my error when I gave the website earlier. I forgot the Weebly part. That's what I was awing about. So it is Danetta Anthony dot weebly dot com i believe is correct so uh, yes. that's s-t-e-n-e-t-t-a-a-n-t-h-o-n-y dot weebly w-e-e-b-l-y dot com so go check that out and again we will have all of that in the show notes so please do go check that out so we just talked about it. So you are obviously on Facebook and I believe on Instagram and Twitter is that correct? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right. So we're going to go uh, again. We'll put that in the show notes to connect with you. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? We really didn't talk too much about your book, The Love Story. So do you want to talk about that just a bit? Well, we can talk about the love story a bit. Uh, the love story, it evolved from uh, actually when I was teaching at a Christian uh, school. And so uh, I was always teaching, uh, looking for some books for inspiration for my younger students. And I wanted to, to learn some biblical lessons that wasn't too involved. And so the love story came from that. And my children liked it. My students liked it. 
like I said, my students liked it. And they helped me to write it. And I am forever grateful that they helped me through that process with wording and illustrations and everything. And so it came from that. And then just having a love for them and wanting to teach them about God's love. Well, that, that is amazing. And, and I, do, I do applaud you for that because a lot of people don't think about the fact that some of these uh, concepts are very difficult for children to grasp. And so, yeah, getting it down to their level, which is what we as children's authors do, is getting down to their level. We don't write simple stories. We just take big ideas and simplify them so they're digestible for young minds. So uh, I do appreciate all of that. And we are just so happy to have you. I think you're a shining light in the children's book industry. And I do applaud everything that you're doing. And I cannot wait to get my copy of Ella Learns to Dance. So thank you for being with us today. And if you want to hang out for a moment, we're going to pull a report on a author writing, marketing, publishing tip. So today's tip, we're going to talk a little bit about what Stanetta brought up about when you're publishing. So all authors get to this point where they have to make the choice whether or not they're going to go with a publisher or they're going to self-publish, whether they're going to go traditional publishing or if they're going to look for a small press. Uh, there's many kinds of small presses out there. You'll hear the terms hybrid publisher, vanity publisher, uh, indie publisher. There are all kinds of names and titles out there. And we're not going to dive too deep into all those. Just know that most of the time a traditional publisher works through an agent, a literary agent, and they will set a contract for you and uh, will give you an advance on your book. And then at that point, they generally will pick it up and go with it. Now you can negotiate some of those items, but for the most part, it's in their control. So if you go with an indie publisher, a lot of times those are just people that are helping you get through the, uh, the publishing process where you pay them a fee and they help you through all the different steps of publishing. Um, now, when we talk about the small presses, these are actually smaller publishing companies than what we would con consider the top five traditional publishing. Now it is very similar. Um, sometimes they do require a literary agent, sometimes they do not. But what I wanted to talk specifically was about is to do your homework, to look into the stability of these companies, because I hear this time and time again, where somebody went with a small press company and for some reason the company went out of business or had to restructure and their books are being taken down. And so they're required to either get their publishing rights back if they do not have them or to go and try and find another small press to publish with another traditional publisher which means that there's going to be multiple changes to their books but at the minimum they would still have to um, purchase new ISBN numbers possibly change the cover maybe the illustration depending on who owns the rights to those so that they can go on and republish their book so you can see where this is a really critical point and a critical decision for you as an author and a writer. So I want you to make sure that you give it the due diligence that it deserves. I know that uh, we're not all legal scholars. That's why I, I wanted to mention the um, professional uh, associations out there that can help you with that. Talk to some of your other writer friends. If you're thinking about a small press, or if you're thinking about traditional publishing or indie publishing, or if you're thinking of doing just straight self-publishing where you do it all yourself, please reach out to some of your author and writer friends and get a good sample of their journey and what they've went through, what the problems that they've run into, the things that they've seen. Get recommendations from them. Make sure you're using your resources well. I hope that's helpful for everyone. And again, we want to thank Stanetta Anthony for being with us today uh, here on the Writer's Parachute, where we're guiding author and writer's dreams to a perfect landing. And we hope that you guys have a wonderful week and that all of your dreams land well. So until next time, welcome and thank you for stopping by on the Writer's Parachute. We'll see you again.
Bye.